Hi, it's Nick from the Run Testers, and this is our review of the Bose Frames Tempo. So what are the Bose Frames Tempo? Well, basically they are headphones with a speaker in them. Uh, they are not kind of in-ear headphones and they are not bone conduction headphones like you get from Aftershock. They're not vibrating or anything. They're basically two speakers kind of here on the kind of temple parts of the frame that play music next to your ear. Um, and yeah, that leaves your ear clear obviously to hear surrounding traffic and means you don't have to have sunglasses and headphones with you. They cost $239.95 in the UK and $250 in the US, so they're not cheap. Bose launched um, audio sunglasses a little while back, but those are kind of more for everyday use. The Tempo are the sports-focused version of those uh, sunglasses. So when it comes to design, um, these uh, you can see they have quite bulky you know, sides on the frame, and that's really obviously because of the speakers, you'd expect that, but actually they're not heavy. Um, they come in under 50 grams, just under it, and when I was kind of running in them, I didn't really feel like they were particularly bulky at all. Once they're on, you kind of start to forget about this a little bit, I think. Um, the sports version, so they have the kind of nose pads here, which kind of make for a more reliable fit when you're, you know, you're running or doing any kind of sport. There are three kind of nose pads included in the box, so you can kind of pick one that has the perfect sit fit for you. The stand lens you get are these mirrored black polarized lenses. Um, there are also things like ones to improve lighting in the kind of low light conditions. There are trail focused ones to try and pick out, you know, routes or something if you're running off road. Um, they are 30 pounds each extra. They're quite easy to remove. Um, and you know, kind of swap in and out, but you just get the kind of black ones as standard. So obviously the key is the audio, it's Bose's open ear audio is what it's called. It is basically a speaker just there, but it's obviously designed to kind of directional and target your ears. There is a fair bit of noise leakage from these at high volumes, but when you're kind of running or cycling, don't think it's really going to bother anyone else unless you're running right next to them. Uh, these are IPX4 rated in terms of waterproofing, so that's sweat and water resistance. It's not fully waterproof, but IPX4 has always been good enough for me in terms of the headphones I've used for running in terms of sweat and rain. I've never had anything break because of water damage, so yeah, I think that should be fine. The battery life is um, eight hours on this thing. It takes one hour to charge them up. Um, eight hours is pretty decent, because you know, the frame, it is big, but it's, it's not heavy, so that's pretty happy with that generally and you get kind of like a told how much battery you have left every time you turn it on. Uh, the controls are on the side here so it's all on the right side of the um, uh, of the glasses. There's a little button here which turns them on and you can double tap that to skip um, and use it to play pause and then this is a touch sensitive panel um, you can swipe it that way for volume up or you can swipe it that way and then swipe it that way for volume down or you can kind of hold your finger against it to get your voice assistant up like Siri or you know the other ones. Um, that when I was cycling and I had a kind of helmet strap against that, it did keep activating uh, Syria, which is quite annoying. But um, generally, they're kind of okay to use. One thing I'll say is to set them up, you have to download a Bose app and put your and kind of log in and set up an account, which is very annoying. Uh, just going to say that now. I wish companies would stop doing that. Should just be able to connect it to the Bluetooth on my phone and play, especially if there's not anything in that app that I really use to control the equalization on these or anything. So, yeah. Let's uh, try and put a flag in the ground and say, stop doing that companies. We just want to pair our headphones to our phones. We don't need an app and to give you all our details to do that. So starting running form, it's just really how do these headphones feel when you're running? Uh, and I was pretty impressed on this front. I thought they were going to be big, annoying, maybe a bit sweaty because of this extra thing, but no, they felt exactly like normal sunglasses to me, really, to be honest. They stayed in place really well. I did a kind of track workout in them in kind of windy conditions, didn't have any problems with them moving around, um, or even the wind affecting the audio, actually, I will say. So yeah, although they look bulky and a little bit odd, once they're on, you kind of forget about it. And I also think, because this is all on the side, don't even really get comments from other people. I don't really notice that you are wearing odd glasses unless they hear the sound leaking from them, obviously. When I was kind of in the woods, even in kind of bright conditions, um, I do find these lenses aren't the clearest in terms of running under tree cover. Um, so I do think you wanna, you will have to kind of splash out the extra cash for the different lenses. I think if you are gonna use these a lot, the low light ones are useful, the trail ones are useful, I would think. So yeah, that is an extra expense to think about if you're gonna use them a lot. Um, also in the UK, especially this time of year, there's not a lot of very sunny days. So um, 
there were a couple of runs I just didn't take them out. I felt self-conscious wearing sunglasses, but I did get to use them a few times on kind of clear or bright days, but that's the UK, it's autumn, and I think that's fair enough. Touch controls are not very easy to use when you're on the move. I will say that, trying to swipe hither and thither to kind of raise and lower the volume, I think is not very helpful. The button's better in terms of kind of skipping tracks and play pause, but yeah. Um, yeah, the controls are kind of okay. They're not terrible. No one's really nailed it even with headphones. So I'm not gonna hold them up too harsh in that front, but I do think this panel when you're cycling is annoying in that my helmet strap did keep setting off my voice assistant. That is a little bit annoying and hopefully something that could be fixed in a later edition of these of these glasses. Uh, in terms of the fit, I'll also say that uh, I usually wear a hat uh, when I'm running and you can wear a hat with these comfortably. I had one of my hats which slightly seemed to get in the way. It must have had a lower kind of side to it than the others, but actually as soon as I kind of got them both on and filled a little bit, I didn't notice that again. So yeah, that's good. You don't want your sunglasses, you know, disrupting the rest of your headgear. Uh, obviously the other thing you get with headphones like this that leave your ears open is extra awareness. Um, and yeah, it, it can be handy at times. Um, again, not in my circumstances. I nearly always run on pavements. Uh, at least I don't run in the road much. The roads around me aren't crazy busy. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it's, yeah, I think it's um, a useful feature, you know, same as you get from Aftershocks' bone conduction headphones. Maybe slightly overstated how useful it is, but you could probably wear these in races where you're not allowed to wear in-ear headphones, so that would be another bonus to them. Uh, with anything kind of audio device, you want to know how good they sound, and these are surprisingly good, would be how I'd put it. Uh, everything was really clear, actually, um, clear and loud. Um, so when I was running around the track, I actually got a, a noise alarm on my watch from the level of wind that was out there. It was setting off the kind of decibel alert thing on the Apple Watch. Um, and But that, I didn't get that at all with the headphones. I didn't really get a load of wind like blocking the sound or it distorting it at all. It sounded really clear for both podcasts and music. Um, when I was cycling or running by a busy road, it is loud enough. It's not brilliant. It's not as good as in your headphones. It's never going to be. It's not blocking out that external noise. But you can still hear your podcasts and music clearly enough when you're running by you know, like a, you know, an A road or something like that with lots of cars coming by. Um, vocals, treble, and like kind of higher end stuff in the music comes through clearly and loudly. There's not much bass. Um, it's almost non-existent really. It's not, these aren't bassy at all and you're just never gonna get that, I don't think, without that kind of in-ear um, headphone kind of connecting to the ear canal. So yeah, that is obviously a big drawback for lots of people. Um, I tend to not listen to very bassy music and I, all, and I often listen to podcasts, so it wasn't a huge thing for me, but yeah, if you're looking for bass, probably don't want uh, your audio device to be sunglasses. I would say, crucially, I do think the sound is better on these than those Aftershocks bone conduction headphones that sit on the cheek. Um, I've always kind of wondered of Aftershocks, why don't you just put a speaker next to your ear? And it turns out if you do that, uh, and Bose makes those speakers, it, it sounds really good. It actually sounds better, I think, than what you get from Aftershocks of these, although these are significantly more expensive than those headphones, and obviously a little bit less flexible to use because you have to wear sunglasses as well. Um, there is a fair bit of noise leakage. Uh, if you're cranking up the volume, people around you are going to hear that you're listening to something. I, you know, most of the time when you're running, this isn't a big deal at all. You know, you, you know, like I say, you're not going to use it when you're running with someone. Probably you're going to be speaking to them, um, or you know, not wearing headphones at all. You're just going to run past someone; they're not going to notice. You move on with your life; it's fine. In a race, if you're kind of in a racing pack and you are doing that, I could see that being a little bit annoying. If the guy next to me in my in the pack, you know, you know, you're all going for a similar time, has got these headphones on, and it's you know, his music's leaking out at me. I, I might find that a little bit annoying, but uh, unless it's at full, you know, quite a high volume, you don't really hear too much. So yeah, it's not a huge problem, but yeah, you definitely do get a fair bit of noise leakage, as you'd expect, since it is just a speaker, you know, on the side of the glasses. So when it comes to the verdict, uh, I do like the Bose Frames Tempo, probably more than I thought I was going to. They sound better than I expected. Um, they also fit better than I expected. They're more secure and more lightweight than I thought they were gonna be. They do feel like glasses, normal sunglasses to me, even though they are you know, heavier than my other sunglasses. I don't really notice that much when I'm out on the run. Um, same time, whether that makes them worthwhile buying is really gonna depend on your circumstances. Um, for me, it, just, it wouldn't be the case. I'm not gonna spend 240 pounds on sunglasses, full stop, uh, even with headphones built in. I, I don't wear sunglasses most of my runs because I live in the UK and not I don't know, California where it's you know, constantly sunny. So already there's you know, maybe 80% of my runs, I'm not wearing these because I don't wanna wear sunglasses and look like a bit of a lemon running around uh, in kind of drizzle with um, lovely sunnies on. So that's obviously one thing. Other thing is I don't need that kind of extra awareness for most of my runs. I'd rather just plug in a really good set of headphones and enjoy my music more, get a bit more bass. Um, so yeah, they ruled out for me. Whether they would fit your circumstances, you probably already know. Like if you are spending a lot of time, you know, 
if you're always running in the sun and cycling in the sun in particular, they're really good for cycling um, and want that extra awareness and are prepared to trade off that kind of music sound quality for it, um, these are really good. And I do think they're better than Aftershocks is bone conduction headphones in terms of sound quality. So they are an upgrade there. Um, they basically do exactly what they set out to do. Um, but yeah, again, it's, it's probably quite a niche demand. <laughs> um, for £240, you could buy a very good set of sports headphones and a very good set of sports um, sunglasses and have both and kind of you use one or t'other depending on your situation or even both at times. Um, so yeah, that's obviously a big drawback. I do think you are going to have to spend the extra money to get the other lenses to make them more useful. If you want to go off-road, I, I do think you're going to want the other the kind of trail-focused lenses because uh, the mirrored black was a bit dark for me even on kind of bright days under tree cover and the low-light lenses obviously mean that you can then use them kind of at twilight when again wearing sunglasses isn't ideal so yeah it's um it's a, it's not a very flexible product but if it fits exactly what you want from it um yeah like if you're wondering do they achieve what they set out to 100 percent, they sound better than they expect they fit really nicely they work well in you know in what they are it's just what they are is i think quite a relatively inflexible quite niche product and it's very expensive so you can have better options if you if you don't need a set of sports sunglasses that's going to play your music to you so that's it guys uh, thank you very much for watching um, do please like and subscribe and ring the little bell so you're notified next time we uh, put a video up um, and yeah let us know in the comments what you think of these do you think it's a useful thing to have your headphones in your glasses? Um, do you live in an area not like the UK where you can wear sunglasses all the time? Uh, let us know and we'll see you next time.